Hey YouTube, how you guys doing? Today I'm gonna use some uh, footage that I recorded in the uh, museum here where I actually learned how to flint map and where I actually learned a lot about what I know about stone tools. And uh, in this one area here with the mammoth and the dire wolves and the giant beaver, uh, there's a paleo Indian display Right here is a modern beaver skull next to an Ice Age beaver skull. You can see how big they were. Crazy big. These wolves here, when you walk in and you walk past them, they, they all howl. The size of a normal wolf jaw with a dire wolf jaw right next to it. You could say it's quite a bit bigger. And this here is the Paleo-Indian display. They are hunting caribou. They're directing the herd with tanned hides and hunting them with fluted spears with boar shafts. It's pretty self-explanatory if you look at what's going on here. And each little section of this circular display here has something else going on in it. Right here is a, somebody napping next to a campfire. And they are napping, uh, it's called Norman Skill Chert. It's a green chert found in New York. And there are some fluted points there, finished ones. A broken one on a four shaft that they're repairing. They even got like running water in this display. It's really cool. Like this is one of my favorite things at, at any museum. Description of tools found at these sites. Uh, side scrapers, end scrapers, cutting tools, flake tools. These are uh, hafted end scrapers. I went over in another video how to make one of these end scrapers for use that you might want to check out. There's a fluted point that they are using as a knife. You can see there's a lot of different activities going on. There's a lot to look at in this little little display. Here's him using a thrusting spear with a clovis or fluted point on it, killing the caribous. Caribous? Caribou? Caribous? What's the plural of caribou? Probably just caribou. They even have a spear in flight from that guy right there. using his atlatl spear thrower and throwing dart. Here is a description of some of the tools found in the display. Side scrapers, fluted spear points, choppers, end scrapers. Now this display here is actually how I started to learn how to shape fluted points and uh, what they should look like for the area of the country that I am in. So I brought in a few rolled in leather just to compare and take some measurements and stuff and see how close I was getting. This was quite a while ago, so I've gotten much better at this since, since this video. This is really when I was first learning how to make fluted points. And I figured I would just bring in the points to compare rather than try to uh, do it on a picture. And I even tried uh, some glass at that point in time to try to get the shape right.
This one was pretty close. It was just smaller. But I did two flutes on that one. That point there reminds me of like a Veil Derbert fluted point, but I kind of I kind of messed up the flute on one side. And it's the uh, you know the same material in the display. It's a uh, Snake Hill chert from River Cobbles and Mormon Skill chert from River Cobbles. So it's a little bit different than what they do, the extremely pure stuff they have in the display there, but. It's a, it's a good comparison for me, personally. Here's a good view. This display here is one of the coolest things I've seen in a museum. And I really wanted to share it with you guys. And really, this is how I learned that even had a half looted points with the sinew was this display here. I'd really like to know who made these points for the display. I have no idea. It's not really written anywhere. There is a few names uh, on other displays, but I'm not sure it's the same person that made these. So the way I learned flint napping was actually this little room right here. There's, uh, you can see those monitors along the side of the circle. And on those monitors, they have videos that play. And in this video, I show some of that video with a, uh, it's a clip of, I think it's how to make a fluted point or just how to flint nap. And there's quite a few videos on these things. This is all uh, artifacts found right near the museum, like right there. And uh, <clears throat> it's made from the same New York shirt. You could see what the spear point would have looked like. That's the actual artifact in the case there. And there's a, I guess, a cast of it. more of what was found it's a broken fluted point looks like they blew the tip off when they fluted it the entire tip came off so they probably just discarded the whole thing It's a little utilized flake or a flake knife. They were using it on something. You could see on the right where the high-powered microscope is zoomed in on the edge, you could see where it was used and where it was not used. 9,500 years old. Here's a, another end scraper. This one's shaped a little bit differently than I'm used to seeing. It's a bit longer. And then a display of what they thought the camp might have looked like, where they were working on things and processing game, processing hides, cutting up meat. Right here is an entire reconstruction of a foreshaft and dart. And that material there, the yellow material, would be uh, Pennsylvania Jasper. And that's also a fluted point. <clears throat> and that's wrapped with sinew and hide glue. You 
see the flute or channel flake right there, right where the, the wood ends, so that it could slide into that shaft. It shows how a atlatl would throw a hunting spear such as that right there. He's got a backup dart in his waist. And this guy here is throwing one of the spears from the atlatl and the dart is in midair on its way to hit the caribou. This would have been a scene from 9,900 years ago. On here they have uh, many different videos that we could go through. It is nearly winter 11,000 years ago. The people are gathering together to prepare themselves for the caribou hunt. Experience has led them to this place at this time to await the caribou's arrival. For the air is turning colder and the caribou are on the move toward their winter grounds in the shelter of the hills. The news of their approach will reach the waiting hunters. The hunt is nearly here, and the people gather to discuss the task ahead and to give thanks for everything the caribou will provide in the long, cold winter that lay ahead. In the morning, there are final preparations and anxious moments of anticipation. And then at last, the hunt is underway. depiction of everything that was going on in that and as quickly as it began the successful hunt is at an end so making tools and weapons the guy in this video is in the flint napping groups his name is noel grayson and these videos here taught me a lot of what I, I originally knew. The, these videos is how I learned how to flint nap. You know, just go to the store and buy something to eat. You know, before you went out, you actually had to make your tools. It shows him collecting flint Grayson is an and finding his flint sources and testing it. In Tahlequah, Oklahoma. He is also a skilled craftsman who after years of practice has mastered the prehistoric art of making stone tools. It's really just carving using the rock as a medium. You want to start with a thick one and take it down and reduce it to the size you want to. Like I've said in other videos, um, this is this is before YouTube. So before YouTube was out, this is how I learned. Once I get it thinned down, 
I'll start pressure flaking it. This not only gives you a sharp edge, but it also gives you the shape that you want. The final step in making a stone point like the one seen in this diorama is a process known as fluting. Out of this, I want to attempt to put a flute, a channel flake right up the center, right here. The same as this. It's extremely hard to do. Anytime you hit the base end of a point like this, there's always a chance that you're going to snap it right in half. Once the point has been fluted, it is attached to the shaft, which is commonly called hafting, and is tied on with it's sinew, where I which is about the animal tendons. Now these are tied on to the point wet, and once it dries, it shrinks so tight that the point will actually break along this area before it comes off. Alright guys, I am going to stop this video here. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the stuff that I researched at this museum. It's called the Mashantucket Pequot Museum in Connecticut. And this is where I learned a lot of what I know. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, give me a, a like, a comment, a subscribe. Let me know what you think. Look at this dog's paw. <laughs> dog dire wolf okay guys you have a good one and i'll see you soon thanks for watching